Welcome to uh, this little podcast on quantitative research or working with numbers. In this podcast, we will be examining what all of this is about. And if you're going to live in the land of nerds, you're going to have to learn the language. By the end of this podcast or this lesson, you should be able to define quantitative research or at least uh, identify a good definition of it. Uh, You should be able to explain the historical development of quantitative research. I would hope that you can identify characteristics of quantitative research and some of the basic research design models, and then identify factors useful to deciding to utilize quantitative research to solve your research problem. Uh, Quantitative research refers to the systematic empirical investigation of social phenomena via statistical, mathematical, or computational techniques. You should recognize that definition. That's right out of Wikipedia. I like that. Empirical is about numbers. When you think quantitative research, think number research, quantifying things with numbers. Quantitative research produces information only on the particular cases studied. Uh, More general conclusions or hypotheses And quantitative methods can always be used to verify which hypotheses are true. Now, quantitative research, again, is a type of research in which the researcher decides what to study. The researcher may ask specific questions and collects quantifiable or number data, analyzes these data, and conducts the inquiry in an objective manner. Uh, Notice that phrase, objective manner, because one of the attributes of quantitative research is that the researcher is distantly objective from the problem. No bias is allowed. Quantitative research is also a type of research in which the researcher knows clearly in advance what he or she is looking for. Now, a exception to this might well be found in the phenomena of uh, data mining out of large data sets, But basic uh, quantitative research generally means that the quantitative researcher already knows what he or she is going to measure. It is also a type of research in which data are in the form of numbers and statistics. Quantify means to number. Quantitative research is number research. Now, a lot of the historical framework of this comes out of the 19th and 20th centuries. In the late 19th century, you see the rise of survey Uh, analysis or survey data, survey research. In the early 20th century, you begin to see experiments comparing different treatments or looking at different groups. Then you see all these tests to quantify. One of the big ones that comes to mind for me is the IQ test. Uh, I taught public school for a number of years, and it always amazed me that every kid that ever failed my algebra class had 160 IQ. Of course, that was according to their mother. Now, I wonder how you put a number on something like intelligence. And of course, most of you are aware Gardner really challenged that with multiple intelligence theory. We see the rise of longitudinal designs in the mid 20th century. And I love this quote from Fred Fred Kerlinger, which says there's no such thing as qualitative data. Everything is either one or zero. Now, all of the computer nerds out there just shouted for joy. All of the qualitative researchers just booed poor old Fred. Now, some of the characteristics of of quantitative data include an emphasis on collecting and analyzing numerical data. Things must be quantified. They must be put into data form. They must be measured. Uh, Scoring measures distinct attributes of individuals and organizations What that means is that the researcher already knows what is to be measured. Then we have comparing of groups or related factors by experiment, correlational studies, or surveys. Now, I'll talk about those in just a moment. And then employing statistical analysis uh, of data sets. So statistical analysis takes numbers and works those numbers over. Now, some of the basic uh, quantitative research designs include experimental, correlational, and survey. Experimental might be taking a a data set or a population and looking at where they were to start with, giving them a treatment, and then seeing what the effect was. That uh, generally can be considered comparative 
analysis. And there are a whole lot of different means by which we perform comparative analysis. Correlational means that things are related. That's a relational study. For instance, uh, the correlation between what my wife says and what I do is very high and, and a very high positive score. The correlation between what my mother says and what I do may indeed now be a negative correlation. Now, they work against each other. The meaner she gets, the more I resist. And then we have survey data, which are really kind of descriptive in nature and may include some comparative of groups. But look at these basic designs, and we'll cover them in this course, experimental, correlational, and survey. One of the things that uh, you need to consider is when you use uh, quantitative research and quantitative methodologies, if you know clearly in advance what needs to be examined, then you're more likely to use quantitative than you are perhaps to use qualitative. Qualitative will be about discovery, finding things that you didn't know. In quantitative statistics, reality is objective and separate from the researcher. The researcher is just a little pointed-eared Mr. Spock, Star Trek, stand out on the side with no emotions. And if you notice, a lot of quantitative researchers do have pointed ears. Uh, data are collected in the form of numbers, of course, and you work with, sometimes you work with very large data sets. Qualitative would tend to work with small groups, maybe even one individual or just one case. And again, the researcher is independent from what is being asked. Quantitative research is, is about quantifying, about putting numbers, and then about examining those numbers to look at things that you already knew to examine. Kind of interesting, isn't it?